When it comes to Japanese warship wrecks, these are generally in poor condition. The ones in shallow water have suffered, as you could expect. Wrecks in deeper water, meanwhile, generally show more damage from the passage of time than their American equivalent. This is most often because these ships suffered worse before sinking, be it from internal explosions or raging infernos aboard as they sank. The heavy cruiser Maya is no exception to this rule. While certainly more intact than, for example, Kaga, Maya is still not in great shape. Her bow broke off as she went under. The stern has almost completely collapsed. And the evidence of rust is everywhere, although it varies in how bad it is. It is worth noting, though, that Maya is relatively shallow, at least considering where she sank. Nonetheless, Maya is in good enough shape to justify her own video, after I briefly looked at her in the overarching Leyte video. As is the usual format, I'll cover each section on its own, the hull, the weaponry, and any unique features. I will only briefly talk about how she sank, as I have an entire video on Maya that I'll link in the description. On October 23rd, 1944, the submarines USS Darter and USS Dace ambushed the Japanese fleet. Darter's torpedoes hit Maya's sister ships, while Dace sent four fish into the side of Maya. Had this been 1942, that might not have been an issue. Mark 14 torpedoes being Mark 14s and all of that. This was, however, 1944. All four torpedoes detonated, tearing Maya apart. One hit in her forward chain locker, the second by her number one turret, and the third in her number seven boiler room. The fourth and final torpedo hit Maya's aft engine room. The combination of these hits sent Maya down within five minutes, taking 336 of her crew with her. She vanished from history at that point until her wreck was rediscovered decades later. Maya was eventually located on April 19th, 2019, at around 1,800 meters, 6,000 feet, beneath the waves. She was found on one of the more famous expeditions, by RV Petrol and Vulcan Inc., who found many notable shipwrecks. The wreck they located was, as said before, in pretty rough shape. Not the worst, but certainly not the best condition either. Let's start at the forward end with her bow. As I said before, Maya's bow broke off at some point after she was hit. It drifted from the rest of the ship, ultimately coming to rest by the stern of the wreck, specifically on the port side, where the bow was found, capsized on the bottom. Other than the whole broke off entirely thing, Maya's bow is in fairly good shape. The overall form is recognizable, although missing the imperial chrysanthemum. And the anchor chain has wrapped around the bow, something we'll be seeing a lot more of later on. As for the imperial crest, it might just be buried beneath the bottom. At this depth, we'll likely never know for sure. In any event, let's move on to the superstructure. This is probably the most distinctive part of the Takao class cruisers. It is the easiest way to be sure this was Maya, along with a quirk of her weaponry that we'll see later. In this first picture, you can see that massive structure lurking out of the darkness. Encrusted with rust and buried in silt, it remains recognizable even so. There are portholes and other windows clearly visible even with the damage. Meanwhile, in the forefront of the picture, we can see one of the anchor chains draped over the ship. It extends out of the darkness and continues on past the triple 25mm gun mount at the side of the image. I will note before moving forward that this gun mount itself is in remarkably good condition. It's rusted out, yes, but still intact. And you can barely make out another mount with the anchor still draped over it in the bottom corner. 
The next image, however, moves closer to the superstructure. Here you can see that it is almost perfectly preserved, with the features still recognizable. The compass platform is visible in the center, with various instruments still intact. Covered in silt, yes, but still there. The fire control platform above it is similarly intact. As Maya was hit by torpedoes, not air attack, this area is completely undamaged, aside from the ravages of time. This other image, from a bit further down, shows another triple 25mm mount, along with a high-angle rangefinder, which is remarkably well-preserved. It retains all the detail it would have had on the surface, and the rangefinder itself hasn't fallen out. That happens on other wrecks, even American ones, so that's impressive to see. As for the bridge behind it, that's the same as the last image. This next shot, however, is a bit less pretty. The blue tint is gone, replaced by the natural color of rust orange. I prefer these images because it shows the condition better. Granted, it doesn't show much differences with the previous two images, other than, of course, the actual color of the hull. What looked mostly fine before still doesn't look terrible, but the actual rusting is far more visible here. Note, for example, a ladder towards the center. That looks almost melted, though it's far more likely to be rust damage than actual fire. Nonetheless, Maya is still pretty intact, at least in this area. Considering how long she's been underwater, that remains impressive. A closer-in picture, seen here, is interesting for much the same reason. In full color, you can see the rusticles drooping down. But you can also see an almost intact set of binoculars. And an electric headset hanging beside it. The cord is still in place, and the headset is still hanging down after nearly a century underwater. It somehow hasn't fallen down. I could expect it to be intact, rubber being what it is, but hanging up like that? That's a lot more surprising. The next couple of pictures remain on the bridge structure, but move up to the fire control platform at the top. You'll note we're spending a lot of time on this part of the ship. Well, so did Petrol. Again, when it comes to the Takao class, the bridge structure is their defining trait. It would be like sending an ROV down to Titanic, and completely ignoring the bow. In any event, this picture here looks more directly at the fire control platform. Probably the most notable part here is the general condition. While rusticles are present, so is paint. And again, the platform is still recognizable. Although, while hard to be sure, it looks like it might be sagging a bit towards the front. I do find the little glimpse of the lower level interesting myself. However, Petrol did not send ROVs inside ships, with good reason, mind you, so that's about all we get. You can see some scattered equipment and silt, but not much more than that. Now, as we look at the next picture, I'll quickly note that the previous ones were on the port side. This shot is from starboard, and a bit further out. Here you can see the remnants of various rangefinders, as well as the control area. While damaged and ravaged by time, everything remains firmly in place. Not quite the looks-like-she-could-be-raised level of other wrecks, but still impressive in its own right. That being said, in the same area, Petrol got a couple of close-in looks at equipment. Here, in the first image, we have a good look at one of the rangefinders. The damage is rough, however. It's basically impossible to tell what kind of rangefinder it once was, because the outer shell is gone, and the interior is a rusted-out mess. Still interesting, to be sure, but there's not much more to say about this. This wrecked equipment does provide one of the more exciting images, however. From closer in, you can see a dial. 
I would assume this is part of the training equipment, or for judging range. However, I cannot read Japanese. I wouldn't be surprised if someone comments who can, and by all means, if you do, let me know what it says. As it sits, though, I can't be certain exactly what this was used for. Nonetheless, it's an important picture to share. For much the same reason, I make a note of writing on American wrecks. This is still legible after nearly a century underwater, and if you cleared off the rust, it could probably be cleaned up and put in a museum. The next picture, which I will only briefly touch on, is another angle on the rangefinder. Notable mostly for the fact you can see the previous section from a bit further out. It's at the back of the rangefinder, and still firmly fixed in its original place. However, with that done, there's only one more picture of the bridge left to share. This damaged equipment here, which appears to be a survey telescope tower. At least judging off of plans of the ship. It's pretty beat up, so that's difficult to say with absolute certainty. In any case, that wraps up the bridge. Now, let's move on. The next two images seem to be the remnants of the foremast. While the funnel around it has collapsed, the mast itself is still standing strong and upright. Although more of that anchor chain is wrapped around the ship next to it. That chain is also wrapped around one of Maya's dual 12.7 cm secondary guns. This weapon, alongside the triple 25 mm behind it, remains pointed up to the sky, either fixed in place as her crew watched for air attack, or fallen back as the elevation mechanism rusted away. Either way, the guns and their mounts remain mostly intact. This is still visible, even on an image looking from a bit higher up. More importantly, at the moment, it shows more of the wrecked funnel and the intact foremast something that continues with the last image on this set. A look directly at the mast, which seems to be completely fine. No major damage and no major rusting, at least in this blue tint. As said before, it might be worse in a different color. Then again, it might not be. Either way, the mast is striking for how good it looks. Very few parts of Maya are quite that good looking when you get down to it. For example, the other mast collapsed atop an aircraft catapult, as seen here. The metal is still more or less intact, but the frame has come down and fallen over. This was likely due to the pressure of water rushing past the hull as she sank. It's also possible the torpedo impacts loosen this mast, more than the other one. In any case, on the bottom today, it makes for an interesting image. Next up, we have the other aircraft catapult, or rather, the base of the catapult. The actual mechanism is long gone, probably torn off as the ship sank. Of note in this picture, beyond that, is the anchor chain. If that's the same one, it's draped over basically the entire length of the cruiser. That aside, just two more pictures to round off the hull, both of which are of the extreme stern, which has largely caved in on itself. In the first picture, you can see the silt of the bottom reaching up and covering a ladder. The stern is clearly buried pretty deep. You can also see just how far the stern has collapsed. In the upper corner, you have the very end of the ship pointing skyward. Behind it, the hull has fallen in on itself. The last thing to note on this picture are two depth charges. The depth charges still rest in their rack, where they were of no use protecting the ship from the submarine that sank her. They're also still very explosive, so it's for the best that Petrol's ROV didn't get any closer. That just leaves the fantail. This is interesting because when you look at it, you can see the damage to the stern in stark detail. The fantail itself is pointing up with extensive rusting. Behind it, on the other hand, 
You have mud covering everything. Yet, even the mud can't hide how far down the hole has collapsed. The depth charge racks towards the back of the image are tilted at a sharp angle. I'm almost impressed they haven't fallen out. With little else to note here, however, I'll begin moving forward with the attention on the guns this time around. First, we have this picture here. Another look at the collapsed stern deck with a lonely 25mm gun at the center. This single mount has, somehow, remained fixed in place, even as the deck fell apart around it, which might well have happened when the ship impacted the bottom. And yet this gun has not budged an inch. I can give the Japanese credit for a strong mount in this case. The next two images drive this point home. They show one of the stern gun turrets, with the deck obliterated around it. And I don't use that term lightly. The deck has completely collapsed, and very little is recognizable about it. Even around the turret, it's falling away on the barbette. It makes it look like the turret is rising out of the bottom, not fixed to the ship. The damage isn't limited to just the deck, either. This turret is notable because of the way the guns are fixed. One barrel is still pointing out on the straight and level, like it never moved since the day Maya sank. The other gun, meanwhile, is pointing skyward. That shows the max elevation of these guns, although they weren't very good in the anti-aircraft role. It is quite likely that barrel is pointing up, because the elevation mechanism is busted, as I said earlier, and the weight of the breech has tugged the gun up. As for the second image, there's only a couple things I want to note here. First, a better look at how the deck has fallen away around the turret. Some of it remains intact on the right side of the image. The rest of it is gone, with only a tattered remnant left attached to the barbette. Not a pretty sight by any definition. The second thing to note, then, are the guns. Here we have a better angle on the extreme elevation of one barrel. And a view inside the other one, where rifling is still faintly visible. Not uncommon on wrecks this deep, but worth mentioning anyway. Unfortunately, as we continue along the hull, there aren't really any shots of the torpedoes. Only one glance at one of the mounts which is so buried in silt that you can't make out much. On the other hand, the image is interesting in another way. Look at how deeply the hull is buried here. Those torpedo tubes are hardly low in the ship. Take this image of Maya when she was still afloat as an example. Those torpedoes were mounted very high in the hull. So that silt is basically reaching deck level. Not much else to say here, though, so let's move on. The next two pictures are of two different 12.7cm gun mounts. This one is in better shape, with the actual mount clearly visible, along with the barrels of the gun pointing up towards the sky. The rust on these barrels does seem to be worse than on the main battery as well. Corrosion is eating away at them at a faster rate, with visible damage up and down the barrels. You can't really make out any rifling, either. And while the mount is more intact, that's only in relative terms. It's buried in silt, and pieces are rusting away. The same story is true on the second mount, with the addition of the anchor chain resting on it from behind. The guns here are, if anything, pointed even further up as well. You can also barely make out what looks like a ready ammunition locker and a ladder in the background. It's a bit dark to be sure, however. With that done though, we're approaching the end of the video. Two more pictures of a 12.7cm gun, a couple of the 25mm anti-aircraft weapons, and the bow main battery turrets are all that's left. Let's begin with the secondary battery. These two are much the same as the previous pictures when it comes to the guns themselves. 
However, the background is notably different. In this first image, you can see a ladder and an entrance into the ship. In both cases, the damage is severe. The ladder is torn and buckled, while the entrance to the ship is clogged with debris. That does make detail a tad hard to make out, but it remains an interesting thing to look at, if you ask me. The final picture of these mounts moves a bit further out. This is probably one of the foremost mounted weapons, because you can see one of the 25mm guns added in Maya's anti-aircraft refit. Along with some of the deck and superstructure around it, although detail is fairly lacking in this picture. Since I'm unsure of what these structures are, I'll leave that for now. Instead, let's look at the main feature of Maya in comparison to her sisters, the aforementioned anti-aircraft refit. After suffering severe battle damage, Maya had one of her main battery turrets removed, specifically the number 3 turret right in front of the bridge. This was replaced with triple 25mm gun mounts in the interest of turning her into something of an anti-aircraft cruiser. Of course, with the general utility, or lack thereof, when it came to these weapons, well, Maya might have been better off keeping the main battery turret. Regardless, you can see the platform that replaced the turret in this picture. You can also see some of the 25mm guns. What's notable about these, compared to others, is the gun shield. It's admittedly fallen off, but it remains next to the mount. I can't think of any other Japanese ship with one of those. There's a better view of one of these shields in the next couple images, all of which are of the same gun mount, with the ever-present anchor chain resting atop it. It's a very good demonstration of how thick the links on this chain were, as it dwarfs the gun mount. I'm honestly impressed that the mount is intact, considering. The gun shield is in place, and the barrels haven't fallen off. It just happens to have a massive chain resting on top of it. In any case, the final shot of this mount is probably the most striking in that regard. It's a perfect side shot, showing the chain stretching across the mount and falling away into the darkness like a giant snake lounging on top of the guns. With that done, however, that just leaves the main battery. The first shot shows the two remaining bow turrets resting pretty on the bottom. Both are fully intact, with the deck around them showing no signs of collapse. In a similar story to the stern turret, though, the guns are a bit off. The number one turret has one gun pointing up, and the other resting flat, if not pointing down. That's not terribly surprising. The number two turret, on the other hand, has both barrels pointing at maximum elevation. That is almost certainly damage to the mechanism, considering the angle and it being both barrels. Something seen better here in the final image for today. Maya's number two turret the barrels silently rusting away as they point skyward. Aiming at an enemy, that is long gone. I think it makes for a striking final image, doesn't it? Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you in the next one.